Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and thank you for joining me today. Today, we're going to talk about t-shirt embroidery, how to stabilize it, select, select the right embroidery design, and if you're using text, it might be a good idea to use spell check. But before we get started, I know we lots of you are chiming in from all over the country, so welcome. Thanks for joining us. I see Judy Quilt is uh, from Southwest Florida, and this poor woman is cutting out reading pillow fronts and backs and ironing all day long. I feel your pain. But you know, actually, I don't really mind ironing. I love the smell that you get, you know, from uh, that fresh kind of linen smell. I love that. Mm -hmm. And Chris Yost, thanks for joining us from Smoky, California again. Yeah, tough, tough year there. Just her. And hello, Judy Warren. Aloha. Hi, Misha. Boy, Misha, you spend... Um, a lot of time with dime. Thank you for that. We appreciate that. So I know lots of you do left chest embroidery, center chest embroidery. You know, t-shirts are really kind of what we live in, right? And when we're doing um, t-shirts, we want to make sure that they're comfortable and that placement is key. So we have some step outs that I'm going to show you. But before we do that, I know many of you are really excited to see the doors from um, last week, and I, I found dozens and dozens of doors. So fair warning, I'm not going to show them all today. I'm going to save some for, for next week because we really found quite a bit. So thank you for everyone who has been joining in on the doors. And if you don't know what we're talking about with the doors, it is a free design that's available on our website all year long. So as you can see on the left, we have January and then February, March, and April and then followed by May, June, July, and August. And then we had, um, of course, September, and that's where we introduced really our first person, a little troll, was it a little gnome or troll, whatever you prefer to call him. And then last week is when I revealed the October door, a little sneak peek that we gave you in the beginning of the, of the broadcast. And then finally, we showcased the final door. And it featured spider webs and, and a, a witch's broom and spiders, mice, and bats, all those creepy things. So our good friend Sue Brown over at OML Embroidery, she hosts a sew along on the Saturday morning following the reveal. And her example was uh, this really fun, colorful, and I, I love how you'll, um, she used different prints. And notice her googly eyes that she added, those kind of creepy looking eyes up in the very top right corner, also on the door and on the bottom of the door. So super fun. I know that she had quite a few people um, participate in her sew along. So Candy Bray, I found that she actually did two doors. So you can see um, she used different fabrics in each one. All of the elements are the same, except on the door on the left, she added an extra mouse. She mirror imaged one uh, and added him. And she added a witch's hat, which I think was a, uh, a free mini from OML Embroidery, along with the trick or treat pumpkin um, at the bottom of the door. And then we had Elaine Kaplan. So she, she followed my example pretty much exactly. And, uh, but I love the colors that she chose for her broom. It really um, pops off of that background fabric and her porch fabric, that wooden kind of walkway, looks super cool. I really like that. And then Carol Johnstone, she seems to be making hers a little bit bigger and adding a banner at the bottom with October. And her notes said that she um, intentionally made the word October two layers and kind of separated those uh, two layers of text so that it would look a little creepy. So I like that, really nice. And Charlene Bro Brokaw, she also used um, kind of very traditional fabric in the brick that she used for the house and the wood grain on the porch, really very well done, really lovely. And then Chris Yost selected some awesome fabric for inside her screen door. Those ghosts look so cre creepy. And her cat at the bottom of the door, she's got a really pretty bow on um, her black cat. Aren't they fun? And some of you are really, uh, Sandy 
Our curie says always googly eyes. I understand that's part of the OML gang is the googly eyes. And Judy Quilt wants to thank Sue for the um, for the doors. Um, when I find her thing, well, she said that somewhere. Uh, sorry about that. And PJ, you're loving all the doors. Yes, I am also. I do, and I absolutely love seeing what other people do. It is just amazing to see how you each make it unique. Everybody's digging into their own stash and um, really you know, making it their own, which is super cool. Crystal Campbell, now we have a little bit of a dot pattern in her uh, choice of fabric for the, the house itself. That looks really cool. She placed her, her uh, jack-o'-lantern trick-or-treat basket on the, underneath the broom. And then Cindy Cordham Clark, she did an entirely different thing. She has expanded her door. She's made it wider and she added a decorative top with a scalloped, uh, beautiful detail at the top and then actually a scalloped edge at the bottom that mirrors that detail on the top. Very well done. And of course, her pumpkin is totally different. It's got a pretty angry looking mouth. Don't you think? That's super fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's see who's next. Gayla George, she also went a fairly traditional and she also used either purple or um, I think she used a purple spider like I did. Now her bats are a little bit different. Her bats are actually flying. I don't think she used the bats that I included uh, in the you know download, but she also has a black cat at the base of her door. Very nice. And Ingrid, um, she also went traditional. I like how her screen door is white and that spider web really does pop. And also her green spider on the lower part of the door. Love that. Super fun. Really did a nice job on that. And Sandy, uh, Arcura, you say you haven't gotten to the October door yet. Next week. Well, get it done so we can showcase yours next week, right? And welcome, Gail, from Vancouver, Washington beautiful part of our country. Absolutely. Um, and then Misha, you can't wait to catch up on the doors now that you have a functioning machine. Yeah. Well, when you don't have a functioning machine, that's a bummer for sure. That's really downtime. Okay. Jane Morris has added a uh, brick to hers. I love that. That looks uh, really authentic. And also she added one of Don's uh, minis, the, um, the witch's hat on the top of the broom. And also she's got a black cat. Uh, let's see. And Jackie Burke, very traditional too. But this time she added a, a pumpkin in the center. He's got a pretty green leaf. And then she picked up on that green on the spider web that's uh, on the spider that's on the you know bottom half of the screen door. Now this one, I think, gets a gold star this week. This was... An exceptional example, and this is made by Alicia Gentry. So I included her comment that you could take a look and see what she has done. So instead of the view of standing on the porch and looking into the house, this is inside the house and looking out the door, out the screen door. And so she's got a, a moon and she said that she's got a crooked tree that is kind of lost in the um, tool that's added. But look at that ghost. How cool is that ghost? I love that. She's got a portrait hanging, you know, on the wall in the house. She added a spider web up there. And uh, she has a table with a candle and a small vase of flowers. Uh, you know, really, that's outstanding. She put the broom over on the right-hand side to give a little bit more space for the mice and, you know, her, her extras. I know. So, Ashley, yeah. Ashley Jones, um, she says, oh, wow, Alicia was so creative. It's her, her fave. And Cindy, you say you love that one. I, you know, everybody's is just fantastic. There is no wrong way to do any of these, um, but it's just, you know, everybody has their own touch that they put on it. And it's so cool. And it was truly my intention all along is to just kind of give you a canvas to let you um, jump off and, and add your own elements. And, you know, so I'm super excited to see how that's it worked out so well. And we only have two left, two left. And then we'll move on to something else new and exciting, right? Okay, so we're gonna talk about t-shirt embroidery. And if you take a look at um, 
the image in the banner of this uh, promotion, you'll notice that Australian is spelled wrong. <laughs> ah, terrible. Anyway, sometimes we catch it and we use Photoshop, but other times, um, you know, when I'm actually doing the shirt, who wants to wear it like that, right? So you have to, I, I always say, when you type your text in your embroidery software, you should copy it and then put it into like uh, Microsoft Word and use spell check to make sure that you haven't made any mistakes. Because um, I have tons of examples of mistakes. And actually, I've seen lots of samples, uh, lots of product for sale that have um, words misspelled. So, whew. Anyway, let's. when you're going to uh, embroider on t-shirt, you have to select the right design, use the right stabilizer and needle, hoop it properly, and make sure that the placement is in the right place. Now, if you're going to do a t-shirt like this, this is my sprinkle kindness like confetti. Um, now, this is uh, a template that I printed on print and stick target template paper. And I actually audition that I put the t-shirt on, I stand in front of the mirror and I see how high it needs to be so that it's pleasing. It's not, you know, too, too low or off center or what have you. So that's how I do center uh, chest embroidery. But when I'm doing left chest embroidery, which many of us are asked to do left chest embroidery, right? Often when you bring that new sewing machine, that new embroidery machine home, there might be somebody in your house who says, hey, could you stitch uh, a Left Chest logo on this stack of t-shirts for me and my golf buddies or something like that. So um, that can be dawning, but you know, there's help at hand, absolutely. So you will start with the embroiderer's compass, right? When I'm gonna start a new project, I go see, well, what would Deborah do? So I look up, what she says. So, you know, you swing the arrow to the topic that you, or the material, the substrate that you're going to stitch on. In this case, it's knits, lightwork, lightweight t-shirts and onesies. And the stabilizer requested is no show mesh. Um, and the needle would be a light ballpoint or an extra slim ballpoint. And so in our Triumph needles, they are labeled, you know, ballpoint, and they come in many different sizes. And mainly for t-shirts, you're gonna want a, a pretty small needle like a 7511. She also has some um, comments below that say, you know, hoop the garment with the, uh, with the stabilizer. But if you need to, you can always slide another layer underneath. Let's see. I like to use our fusible um, um, no-show mesh. <laughs> so let's go on over to the other cam so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's a good example, Wild Crest Beach Patrol. I spent a lot of fun days on that beach, I can tell you that. And here's my um, spelled wrong Australian. Oh my goodness, all our friends down under will be upset with us. So here's my no-show mesh that I've already pre-cut. You can see one side has, see that glistening surface? That's my fusible. That's what's going to glue to my garment. So I would place that fu shiny side, fusible side down, and then fuse it to my t-shirt, pretty much that whole left chest area. You can't go wrong in adding an extra large piece of stabilizer. Don't worry about that. You can trim it down later on and then you will be, um, you know, or you won't have to worry about it not getting captured in the hoop because it really must be captured in the hoop. That's key. So I'm going to use my embroiderer's helper to position the target sticker because I want my whole stack of t-shirts to match. So I place the curve right underneath the ribbing and I've folded my t-shirts in half by matching the shoulder seams. So each of the shoulder seams are matched. I, you know, I would have pressed the t-shirt first and applied that no-show mesh to the wrong side of the shirt before I add my target sticker. And then I just take that target sticker. This shirt happens to be a medium. So I position it right in that notch, aligning the crosshair with the medium notch. And then I'll move that away. Now it's time to do an extra large and pretty much the same way I'm going to do that. Now I'll give you a couple tips. 
sometimes, uh, well, we'll talk about that when we get back over on the main camera. Okay, so here's my extra large, and I'm just aligning that crosshair with that notch and smoothing it in place, removing that. And now I have a 2X. So I'm going to need uh, the, uh, the embroiderer's big helper. And again, I'll place um, that curve at the bottom of the ribbing and the straight edge right alongside with the fold, which is the center of my shirt. And this is a 2X. So I will place that 2X right there. And now when it's time to hoop, I'm all ready. I have my whole stack positioned. And isn't that, isn't that the hardest part of embroidery is the setup? So let's see how we're going to hoop this. I'm go I've already prepared a t-shirt over here. Um, and now if you will bear with me, I'm actually have to uh, walk away from this area and I'm going to turn off the light so I can use PAL, okay? So just bear with me one minute. Don't go away. It's gonna get dark and then we're gonna put on PAL and then you'll be able to see the beam which is important i always use pal when i am embroidering on left chest uh any left chest garment so i have my bottom frame of monster hoop and you could also do this in a standard embroidery hoop doesn't have to be a magnetic hoop but boy these magnetic hoops are fabulous for knit fabrics because they don't distort those tricky fibers you'll notice that my um laser beam is hitting my ruler and I purchased these are extra I it was an extra purchase you don't have to use the rulers you could just use a mark like with a sharpie and then I'm going to take my t-shirt and because I'm on my single needle machine oh I bet I don't have a target sticker on this one I don't have a target sticker on this one so let's get that marked just like we did earlier oh boy live so much fun so much fun okay so we'll do that again we'll just get that sticker in place and then i know exactly where i'm going with it right and this is an extra large so right there okay so now that i have that marked i'm actually going to turn my shirt wrong side out and i want to position that target sticker right underneath of the laser. Now remember, my laser was aligned with my bottom hoop, right? So I know now that my target sticker is also aligned with my bottom hoop. And then I just take my hoop, my top magnetic frame, and I position it, I'm, al I'm aligning it with the top of that bottom frame, and then I'm just going to drop it in place. And you can see everything stays completely lined up. I can and use my uh, plastic shield, my protective shield to transport this to the machine and center my needle dead center over there. I would of course keep all of this up above the machine bed so that it's nested and won't get caught in, you know, underneath the machine. Isn't that awesome? But you know, maybe you have a, um, I'm gonna go put the lights back on. Maybe you have a polo shirt. So that embroiderer's helper works the same for a polo shirt. And let me show you that. Here's a shirt, and I just stole this out of my husband's closet. <laughs> oh, it's tough being married to an embroiderer. You never know <laughs> what you're gonna, what's gonna go moving out of your closet, right? So this is an XL, and I just thought I would show you that when you align this with um, the button in the center of the placket. It is right in the center of that logo that's already been stitched. You know, he bought it like this. He doesn't let me do it. And sometimes he does, but this one came with Greg Norman's logo. So super easy, huh? It, you can use it for polos or regular t-shirts. Uh, let's see, and let's see. Do you recommend using a hoop just big enough for the design instead of a larger hoop? Yes, for definitely for knits. I don't like to go massive if, um, in the hoop. I want to make sure that the uh, that I'm using somewhat the smallest. Uh, you know, if my design is just four by four, 
I may go to a five by seven, but if I'm able to use PAL, um, then I know I'm gonna be dead center and it is definitely going to fit in there in a four by four hoop. Um, let's see. And if you put the ruler on the bottom of the hoop, does the, does the magnet, when you put the top, it doesn't interfere with the magnetic surface. It's fine. Yep. And Mary, you, you bought the, um, the PAL and you're not sure how to use it. Well, I just showed you how to use it for that. It's also excellent for continuous embroidery. You search on my website, Perfect Alignment Laser on the blog, and you will be able to uh, find lots of information on, on how to use PAL. And hello, Joanne Banco. Thanks for joining us today. And you said, I bet that Marie, that would be my stitching sister, well, went through miles of that fusible mesh stabilizer in her embroidery business. She sure did. Yep, absolutely. And Lisa says, um, MedPal, not Paul. Oops, just get really nervous trying to use the mat. Okay, don't be nervous about this embroidery stuff. You know, we're not nurses and doctors, right? It's not muscle and bones, just fabric and thread. Practice on, on items that you don't have any emotional attachment to or a financial investment you know, felt, old t-shirts that maybe your husband or you are about to, you know, donate to a thrift store or, you know, uh, to pass on to someone else. Use them and practice on them. So what if they already have a logo on it, you know, something that's screen printed? Doesn't matter, embroider over it. Using those types of projects will make you more comfortable and more confident in your skills. Now the hoop mat is just gonna lay on your work surface and it's gonna hold, any hoop that you're working with still and get and eliminate complete, you know, skidding all around the place. That's the hardest thing. So it doesn't matter if it's a monster hoop with a metal bottom or if it is a standard embroidery hoop, which is plastic, they still all stay in place. Yeah, Misha, said, Misha Pennington says, use this stained shirt. If it works, you have a new shirt. Well, that's pretty cute. How about toddler shirts and sizes? We have another product for for children's shirts and toddlers that is the children's perfect placement kit. And um, that's, that's a fabulous kit. It handles from infant to, I think it's uh, youth size 12, and it has left chest and center chest. And Arlene, does it matter what type of thread you use on a t-shirt? Well, I would suggest that you use polyester thread because it is going to be, uh, it'll be able to handle the wear and tear of normal wear and also excess laundering. So, you know, in um, commercial world where they do a lot of uniforms, they always use polyester thread. And of course we love our exquisite polyester thread. It has such a beautiful sheen and it is so strong, absolutely. And let's see, um, and Retha said, yeah, you like that tip. Nobody is going to die. You, you, let me tell you who gets upset if your design is crooked other embroiderers. People who don't embroider don't even notice. You walk through Kohl's or Walmart or Target and you look at their embroidery, I guarantee it's not all straight. And if they have it on two sides, it's absolutely not symmetrical. I can tell you that because I've measured them. <laughs> How do you hoop a small child's shirt? Um, well, you use a small hoop and I, that's also on my blog. You could find that there. Do I have a onesie right here? Hmm. I don't have a onesie right here, but we can talk about that in the future for sure. Because, you know, I know lots of people want to know how to hoop a onesie, but it's super easy. Um, I just, well, if you want to bear with me, I could grab one. I think I have one over here. Let's see. But it's the same idea, same idea. I have this little gray one. And do I have a hoop guard? I don't have a hoop guard. This is terrible. No hoop guard. Yeah, I'm kind of out here, you know, all by myself. Let's see what we got here. Um, here's my four by four hoop. I don't have a hoop guard, which is what you need. And a hoop guard is, um, but basically I hoop my onesie 
Design side down. Actually, let's go through the neck, right? Let's go through the neck. We actually are working on a new product that you are going to love. It's gonna come out in December. And in the meantime, uh, it'll be out first week of December, right after Thanksgiving. And you're going to absolutely love that product because it's gonna solve all these problems of pooping, these tiny little things and bigger things. And this is so not what I wanted to do. <laughs> what am I doing here? I can't do this. I'm not gonna do this on camera right now. Okay, bring me back. Sorry, everybody. We ne I need to be set up for that. Yeah, Kirsten, you're close. We have uh, a pretty hot thing that's coming out that's similar to the totally tubular pressing station, but it's all for hooping. It's going to have the right hoop mats for it and all kinds of tricks. So, um, but here's my team. They're telling you, you can get some really uh, great tips on how to hoop uh, children's items on the blog. There's um, lots of difference. And let's see, Beth wants to know, how does the embroiders help her account for the difference between men's and women's sizes? So that's a really good question. So what I do for um, when I'm doing women's garments, I use the notch on the embroiders helper that's one size smaller than, um, than the mark here. So if I'm doing a woman's medium, I actually put the target sticker at the small. It's really not that much of a difference and it really, it, it makes it work beautifully. I'll also give you a tip. If you're like uh, some women and um, I'm guilty of this, you know, through the years, my body has changed and I have to purchase larger shirts for areas of my figure that have nothing to do with my shoulders, okay? So I, uh, if I need to wear, if I, if, if I purchase a shirt that's a large, I actually use the medium sticker hole for, you know, mark for the embroiderer's helper because, you know, my shoulders haven't changed. This distance from the left chest to the center chest is still the same figure as it was 20 years ago, regardless of what's happening down south. So, um, and what if it's a woman's small? Well, Becky moms, if it's, a, if it's a woman small, then I would just move this edge over just about a quarter inch. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, oh, Judy Warren, you loves the tantalizing previews. Oh, you're going to love this product. I wish we could get it out tomorrow, but anyway, not quite yet. Not quite yet. So, um, Let's see, what other questions do you have? Uh, Dinah, you love the hoop mat. Isn't it amazing? It really does group the hoop and stay put. Um, and you know, for those four-way stretch products that we have, uh, knits that many people, golf shirts are often made out of that. Um, that is for, um, we have another stabilizer that is uh, our stretchy knit stabilizer that works just beautifully for that. And Patty, you want to know, what are the bottom notch notches on the embroiderer's helper? Well, in the commercial world, they often use lasers to align um, marks on a garment so that they don't actually have to mark it. So they would put two target stickers on the garment. And then when they're hooping, that helps them uh, align. So that's what that's there for. You know, we just basically ignore it for when we're work. We don't need to do it because we have the laser that goes over top. It's beautiful. And so many of our machines are um, so sophisticated. You know, they allow us to see what's in the hoop. They allow us to place a grid over it, you know, uh, like on the screen and so forth. So no worries with that. Well, next week we are, what are we doing next week? Oh my, next week is all about metallic thread. Woohoo! which I'm super excited about. Yeah. Okay. And so here's Sharon Schroeder. She's got a question. When I put the rulers on my monster hoop, I match them to the stitch out, but they don't look centered in the hoop for her 10 needle. Is that normal? Yes, that's normal. That is normal. Um, the center of the design area, the sewing field is not necessarily the geographical center of the frame. I, I don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> That's the machine companies that do that. And it all has to do with, you know, the pantograph, the foot and clearing and blah, blah, blah. So that that's 
on above my pay scale. I just know that if you stitch that crosshair in the center of a hoop stabilizer, that's the center of your hoop. Yep. And um, yeah, Lisa, Lisa, you do need to get that uh, shirt helper marker. It's just such a great thing to have in your sewing room. I mean, my goodness, I oh, I have these in my sewing room all the time. It's just been uh, such a handy tool, you know, because I don't sweat the placement anymore. And, you know, left chest is different than center chest. Center chest, you could put a crease and, you know, you have a reference line with the neckline and so forth, but not on that left chest because you're kind of out in left field. How much is the, uh, the helper? Um, somebody will get that for me right up. And your husband's going to kill you. <laughs> oh, no, he loves you. And he wants you to be happy, Misha. In fact, he called our customer service and he said, you can have whatever you want, Misha. I just want you to be happy. But hey, shall we take a look at um, a, uh, a peek into the past and see that uh, our beautiful new, uh, well, not new, but this beautiful new to you handkerchief. Look at this. Is this luscious? I'm going to come up a little bit and hopefully it'll hold still. But I want you to notice that here we have, in this area here, we have drawn work. I'm going to open this up so that it's on the dark blue so you can get kind of a better look at that work. So in here, we have drawn work. And drawn work is where some of the threads of the warp and the weft are removed to leave a bit of an opening in that space. And then those threads are secured underneath some of the deco stitching outside. In this coral area, that's not drawn work. That's extra thread that has been laid over that you know linen fabric by hand. And all of these satin stitches, all of these beautiful satin stitches are corded. They are raised. So that outline, this darker coral is raised above this fill area. It's absolutely exquisite. And then the, look at these little satin, well, I'm gonna call them tulips for lack of a better name. They're also raised. Each tiny little stitch is under, it covers, a certain, you know, some kind of padding under there that makes it appear to be uh, in relief. It is just absolutely stunning. All this work done by hand. I'm sure you want to take a look at the back. So we can go ahead and take a look at the back. It is almost as beautiful as the front. Absolutely lovely. You'll notice they have what I would call jump stitches, right? That work from one area to the other. Here you can see all of that work all by hand. It is absolutely exquisite, just beautiful. And so colorful, so colorful. Two shades of coral and then the white on this white linen really pops. So delicate and yet very, very beautiful. Oh, I love that. It's just gorgeous. Let's center that up there. So beautiful. And Kirsten, you like the drawn work. I like drawn work too. I would not be able to do that. I can tell you, I wouldn't even know where to start. And Lisa, how do you get that to come out so beautiful? Well, these are treasures from the past. They are not my creation. They were um, gifted to me, the, a large collection of these hand embroidered handkerchiefs from my friend Richard Jardin, who is the owner of embroideryarts.com. You should visit his website, embroideryarts.com. It is exquisite, exquisite machine embroidery monogram lettering for us to use and just absolutely beautiful. So if you like these images, these beautiful illustrations of beautiful handwork, then you will love the embroidery designs that he has to offer because they're, uh, they're just right along that line. And he's an artist in himself, so he... Um, he most certainly creates all of that. Oh, he does all the digitizing himself and so forth. Anyway, you have to go there. I use their, their um, lettering all the time. So let's see what other comments we have. And do you have any idea when these were made? I don't know, Misha, when these were made. I don't know. But um, 
I should write to uh, Richards and see if he has any uh, background on some of them. Let's see. Uh, what other questions? Just want to make sure there aren't any important questions that I'm missing. Any important questions? I don't think so. I think we're doing pretty good today. So next week, uh, can you show the hoop mat again? Sure. Sure, Jane, we can do that. Let's go over here, show you the hoop mat. So the hoop mat is, um, you know, it, it rolls up so it, you can use it in different places, you know, in your sewing room, it's not, it doesn't have to be mounted or anything like that. But because it's got this non-slip surface, it doesn't move. So when I put my outer frame or my bottom frame of monster hoop or an outer frame of a standard hoop, it will not move. And so when I am hooping, you know, I can just completely ignore my bottom frame. I know it's going to be in the right place. And I always do use PAL. You probably can't see that it's on right now because I have the overhead lights on. And know that at home in my sewing studio, you know, I don't have to turn off the lights. It, it's because I'm in this photography studio here that we have extra light, you know, really high lights so that the cameras work and all of that. But normally that wouldn't be your case at home. You wouldn't have to turn it on. It's a nice strong beam. And then I just place that garment underneath that beam aligning that mark spot now i'm using a target sticker you very well could have an embroidery design template that has the embroidery design printed on it and then i just place that you could hear it snap right so i place it so it's attached at the bottom smooth my fabric keep my hands out of the way i'm just opening that whole sewing field and there you have it. Now, because it's a flat metal hoop, I can pull and tug on this fabric to make sure that it's nice and taut. That's also another great reason for using a large piece of stabilizer. You want it to be, you know, filling that hoop and expanding, be, expanding beyond it. So then when I go to the machine, I just lift it like so and then attach it to my machine, center my needle right over that target sticker, and I know I'm dead center, so. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Kristen, you didn't know it rolled up. Uh, you have to have one, you absolutely have to have one. What you can't do though, Kristen, is uh, use it as a cutting mat. I saw on Facebook last week, somebody had, two small hats and two small mats because they sliced it in half. And I actually have done that myself. And Marianne, you wanna know, can it be used with all hoops and all brands? All hoops, all brands, standard embroidery hoops, and also um, doesn't, and the monster hoops, doesn't matter. Ritha, you wanna know if you can buy extra rulers? You sure can, you have to call customer service, 1-888-739-0555. Five, five. They are considered a part, so they're not actually on our website, I believe. In addition to the no-show fusible mesh for t-shirts, do you use an additional stabilizer? Uh, that would depend on the stitch count of the design. If it's stitch intensive, then I would probably float a tearaway underneath my hoop one, once I'm at the machine. But normally, you know, I like my t-shirts to be uh, very comfortable, very wearable. Like this is pretty heavy. This is pretty big text. And I only used one layer of the fusible no-show mesh that was fused to the back of the t-shirt. I didn't have to add any tear away underneath. Uh, can it be used with the Janome 15,000? Sure. It can be used with the Janome 15,000. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's going to hold any hoop, any hoop at all. It's just a fabulous product. And, you know, I use it for other things in my house. Like here in this studio, we have uh, we have two extra laptops over there that are actually, you know, feeding cameras into this broadcast, and they're on these little pedestal stands. And underneath each of the laptops is a hoop mat <laughs> because I don't want that laptop to go flying off, you know. So, and Joanne, Patty, you love my haircut. Thank you. Thank you very much. Me too. I'm glad it's short. It was fun. Is there a hoop mat for the, somebody's got a question. She didn't finish her comment. Let me know your question. We have, we, she wanted to know, is there a monster hoop? We make monster hoops for Foth, Viking, uh, Baby Lock, Brother, 
and um, some Janome. Let's see. She wanted to know, is it for the PE 800? Not sure what the PE 800 is, uh, but I think it's probably like a PE 700. That's kind of my guess. And um, if, if that's your question, then yes, we would make a, set, a five by seven. But uh, I can look into that uh, after this. And then if you give me about an hour and check our um, website, well, no, it's going to be more than an hour. But yeah, we could look into that. How do you actually find the center in order to apply the tape? Story, we have on my blog, um, go to dzgns.com slash blog and in the search field, search for adhesive rulers. And when you do that, you will find a blog post and a download link so that you can download a crosshair for it's in multiple formats and in different lengths, but it doesn't really mean, it doesn't really matter what size you actually stitch. And you're going to stitch this crosshair on hooped stabilizer in your monster hoop. And then um, take that under PAL, if you have PAL, and align the beams with the stitched crosshair and then apply your rulers. And um, now if you're going to do it on, you can't really use that same process for the um, bottom frame. But what I've done with that is I have hooped my stabilizer in my monster hoop and stitched that crosshair. And then before dismantling, dismantling it, I trace the inner ring of the frame on that stabilizer. Then I take the top off and put that crosshair with the uh, traced frame underneath my metal hoop and align it and everything works fine. And Sue Rigsby, there is not a Janome, uh, there is not a monster hoop for the Janome um, top of the line machines. And that's because your hoop attaches to your machine very f be behind the machine head itself, really far away from the machine head. And that would result in a very heavy hoop that would not perform ideally on the Janome machine. So that's why we don't make it for um, the Janome 15,000. Uh, we do make it for the Janome 500, 550E. So um, we wish we could because we've tried and tried and tried. We've even worked with, you know, the manufacturer of, of Janome machines because they would like to have it work also. But it's just not possible. It's just not possible. So anyway, next week, we're going to be back here to talk all about metallic thread and adding shine and sparkle. And it's that season, right? We're starting to think about Christmas and New Year's and all those fun holidays and super fun um, to uh, stitch, you know, really bright, colorful things. And let's see, uh, Charlene, you want to know, will the no-show mesh still show through on a white t-shirt? It will not show through. That's the beauty of it. It is translucent and just blends with the shirt. Now, of course, I wouldn't leave a big patch. You know, I would trim around it. I'd leave about a half inch all the way around. If you have pinking shears, that would be the best way to trim it. But um Super easy to do. And Ashley Jones has told us that the PE 800, uh, the hoop that you want is our Snap Hoop Monster Hoop, the LM6. And that is a five by seven hoop, so that will fit your machine. And hello, Marie Doyle, you're from Ireland and you have three magnetic hoops. I love that, thank you. I have family in Ireland. Haven't been yet, maybe someday, not this year, right? We're not getting out of the country this year, but. Anyway, okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Super fun today to have you here. And if you're watching the rebroadcast, thank you. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you are always informed when we're going live. Bye.